Good morning everyone. Welcome, welcome to our morning prayer. Now over the last few weeks I've been a bit quiet. And if I'm still a few weeks, last week, um, I noticed that actually my morning prayer was really quiet and I fiddled a bit more with the settings. So hopefully it should be louder uh, today. If it isn't, please do let me know uh, and I'll do something else. Morning, Margaret. Morning, Lynn. Um. So how's the sound at the moment, everybody? Um, Oh, uh, last week it went really quiet on Facebook Live. Uh, could you let me know, is, this, is that sound okay or is it coming? Tell me if I'm loud and clear. If I'm not, hey up dot, uh, whether I'm uh, uh, loud and clear or whether I need to work a bit more on the sound. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, quiet still. Oh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here, really. I've done everything I think that I need to do. Let me just press that button again. Uh, it does seem to be... It does seem to be very quiet, which is going to be a pain in the neck. Oh, well, I'll see if I can... I'm buying a new microphone, so maybe that will make a difference. Um, but thank you, everybody. <laughs> no, it, 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 Lynn, it isn't you. I think that uh, people were, and I'm hearing it back, actually, morning prayer last week was really very quiet, um, and I don't know why. Oh, good on your phone. Oh, right, okay. Right, well, let's persevere, shall we? <laughs> good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our morning prayer. Um, perhaps you've got your liturgy with you and we can join in our opening prayer together. Shine on us, Lord, like the sun that lights at day. Chase away the dark and all shadow of sin. May we wake eager to hear your word. As day follows night, may we be bathed in your glory. And our psalm. Oh God, I long for you from early morning. My whole being desires you. Like a dry, worn-out and waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. Let me see you in the place of prayer. Let me see how glorious you are. Your constant love is better than life itself, and so I will praise you. I will give thanks as long as I live. I will raise my hands to you in prayer. My soul will feast and be satisfied. And I will sing glad songs of praise to you. Amen. Amen. Our readings today. Morning, Paul and Christine. Um, our readings today. <laughs> we're, we're back in the apocalyptic. So again, um, uh, make of these what you will. The uh, stories of dreams. Um, I think what's really helpful about them is that uh, they do give us a sense of perspective that the world is so much bigger and more mysterious and more complex and not in our control than we thought it was. Uh, so, hear these words from 
Daniel chapter 8, verses 1 to 14, and then it's Revelation 10. During the third year of King Belshazzar's reign, I, Daniel, saw another vision, following the one that had already appeared to me. In this vision, I was at the fortress of Susa, in the province of Elam, standing beside the Ulai River. As I looked up, I saw a ram with two long horns standing beside the river. One of the horns was longer than the other, even though it had grown later than the other one. The ram butted everything out of the way to the west, to the north and to the south, and no one could stand against him or help his victims. He did as he pleased and became very great. While I was watching, suddenly a male goat appeared from the west, crossing the land so swiftly that it didn't even touch the ground. This goat, which had one very large horn between its eyes, headed towards the two-headed ram that I'd seen standing beside the river, rushing to him in a rage. The goat charged furiously at the ram and struck him, breaking off both his horns. Now the ram was helpless, and the goat knocked him down and trampled him. No one could rescue the ram from the goat's power. The goat became very powerful, but at its height, but at the height of his power, his, law, his large horn was broken off. In the large horn's place grew four prominent horns, pointing in the four directions of the earth. Then one of the prominent horns came in a small horn, whose power was, grew very great. It extended towards the south, the east, and towards the glorious land of Israel. Its power reached the heavens, where it attacked the heavenly army, throwing some of the heavenly beings and some of the stars to the ground and trampling them. It even challenged the commander of heaven's army by cancelling the daily sacrifices offered to him and by destroying his temple. The army of heaven was restrained from responding to this rebellion. So, daily sacrifices were, so the daily sacrifice was halted and the truth was overthrown. The horn succeeded in everything it did. Then I heard two holy ones talking to each other. One of them asked, how long will the events of this vision last? How long will the rebellion that causes desecration stop the daily sacrifices? How long will the temple and heaven's army be trampled on? The other replied, it will take 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the temple will be made right again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, I think that it's quite clear that within Daniel, this is a, a talking about the power of nations, isn't it? Um, I was once very concerned in my previous church by a lady who kept talking to me in dreams of dragons. There were red dragons and blue dragons and green dragons. And I got very upset. That was until the day I realised that the Lord just seemed to talk to her in dragons. <laughs> Didn't talk to me in dragons, but talked to her in dragons. And it was something to do with her background. And it was very meaningful to her. But it wasn't to me. And I, and I didn't need to be worried. I just needed to focus upon God and allow him to speak to me in a way that I could understand. Revelation 10. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, surrounded by a cloud with a rainbow over his head. His face shone like the sun and his feet were like pillars of fire. And in his hand was a small scroll that had been opened. He stood with his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he shouted with a great shout like the roar of a lion. And when he shouted, the seven thunders answered. When the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, Keep secret what the seven thunders say and do not write it down. Then the angel I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand towards heaven. He swore an oath in the name of the one who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and everything in them, the earth and everything in it, and the sea and everything in it. He said, there will be no more delay. When the seventh angel blows his trumpet, God's mysterious plans will be fulfilled. It will happen just as he announced it to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice from heaven spoke to me again, go and take the open scroll from the hand of the angel 
who was standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll. Yes, take it and eat it, he said. It will be as sweet as honey in your mouth, but it will turn sour in your stomach. So I took the small scroll from the hand of the angel and I ate it. It was sweet in my mouth, but when I swallowed it, it turned sour in my stomach. Then I, then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages and kings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Probably the best verse to remember in that is where we talk about the mysterious plans of God. There we go. God's mysterious plans will be fulfilled. God's mysterious plans will be fulfilled. So what's going to happen with your day today? I've got a Christmas day today. I'm going to be thinking about uh, all our Christmas services afresh and trying to write down um, some, some orders of service. And I've got the wonderful PCC tonight, where we're going to explore a whole load of things, particularly our outward giving as a church. So if you could pray for us today, that we would exercise good leadership as a team. So let's just take a moment, bring to mind those things in your life that worry you, those things that uh, you want to bring to God, those people and situations. So let's just bring them into God in our prayer, shall we? So let's say our prayer together, shall we? Lord, we offer you all we are, all we have, all we do, and all whom we shall meet this day, that you will be given the glory. We offer you our homes and work, our schools and leisure, and everyone in our community today. May all be done as if it is for you. We offer you those who lack and those who earn, May the wealth and work of the world be available to all and for the exploitation of none. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me this morning as uh, for our morning prayer. Hopefully you'll be able to join me on uh, Wednesday. In fact, um, I'm not sure it's going to be me. It might be Lizzie on Wednesday uh, to do evening prayer, which will be just wonderful. Um, Keep safe, everyone. Uh, if I can help at all, please do just drop me an email. I'd love to have a conversation on the phone. Uh, just let me know. And I will certainly pray for all of you. So let's have our closing prayer, shall we? Circle us, Lord. Keep strife without. Keep peace within. Keep fear without. Keep hope within. Keep pride without. Keep trust within. Keep harm without. Keep good within. May we walk in the hope of your kingdom. Fill us with your light and love. Be with us all through this day, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I will hopefully see you very soon. God bless. Bye bye.